Okay. There should be sound. There should be me. Hello and uh, welcome to this 52 Miniatures live stream. Uh, I think number 31. Uh, it's a Sunday. It's Easter. Uh, I haven't really been doing much Easter things. Had Easter dinner yesterday. Uh, so far kind of lacking in the chocolate egg uh, sort of department. Please let me know if you can see me and hear me. But I think everything should be fine. Hello, everybody. Phil is cooking, but still here. Good to see you or read you, Phil. Marcus, how are you doing, Marcus? I hope you're doing well. Are you painting miniatures? I haven't really been seeing you painting much miniatures. Are you painting miniatures? Um, it's the 31st stream on the 31st day, indeed. Uh, Alison, how are you? Uh, good time of day. Yeah. I've been seeing your updates from Adepticon, Alison. It's been fun to see. I uh, wish I could have gone to Adepticon, but as this video states, I'm going to salute instead, which is just, you know, it's a tad closer, honestly. Uh, hello, Osio Ronic. Hope you're doing well. And uh, King of the Cheese from Central Indiana. Welcome. Marcus, haven't been painting. Yeah, what, what have you been doing, Marcus? I'm interested. It's I'm still glad to see you, um, you know, regardless of the lack of painting. Max Power, how are you? Uh, Arnold, how are you doing? Travis, good morning. Salutations from Iowa. Yes, I'm in Stockholm, unless you already, uh, maybe you knew that. It was a lovely day yesterday. Today is more of a sort of uh, cloudy day well spent in the bunker painting a goblin. Chris, how are you, Chris? Good to see you. Um, Chris is a, is a patron. I came to visit me once in, in Stockholm. Are you maybe a bit busy now, Chris? With what the world looks like. Anyway, uh, rubbish. That's... <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude. It's, it's just the uh, rubbish is here. Um, really enjoyed the cinematography in the last video. Beautiful stuff. Very calming. Thank you. Um, it was uh, it was a very nice visit to the Faroe Islands. I was there working, but I also managed to film some miniature painting and that. If you haven't watched the video, watched the video, you should. It was the last upload. Uh, lots of uh, picturesque settings from the Faroe Islands as well as a lot of painting on a boat which was weird because like everything was you know constantly everything looked like this uh, including the wet palette which is kind of you know trying to paint a miniature in motion is interesting but it was a lot of fun um, let's see Greg says, yay, I'll be at Salute too. I hope I get a chance to say hi. Indeed, I hope you do. Um, I'm going to be on a panel. The big English craft-off. It's like the bake-off, but it's a build-off or craft-off or terrain-off or something like that. And... Um, so there's going to be a panel. I think you can actually see it in the thumbnail. There's a picture. There's also a time on there. I think it's like 12.45 or something like that. So if you uh, feel like you definitely want to say hi, you know, um, you at least have one guaranteed location, uh, of, you know, where I will be existing in a certain point of time, which is after that panel. So, uh, but please come say hi. It'd be great. Kleiner from Germany, happy Easter. Yes, happy Easter. Uh, Max Power says, I'm looking forward to Salute. Got my tickets already. Good to hear. I actually, I, I got my ticket. I bought a ticket. In, in hindsight, maybe I wouldn't have to bought a ticket considering I'm some kind of a special guest. Um, but, you know, it kind of felt rude not buying a ticket, I guess. 
Arnold from the Netherlands, greetings. Yes. Um, greetings to you too. Hello, Costa. Uh, Marcus says, when I'm not painting, I'm doing a number of other hobby crafts. This is good. I know you you uh, so, so, so oh, that's a tricky word for an only partially native English person. Um, but I'm 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 good to hear at least you have time for some some stuff that isn't work. That was kind of more of the issue, I guess. Travis says the wave formed in the wet palette was a really nice shot. Yeah, that was like a, a constant. Um, it's interesting how you sort of get used to to the the motion of the boat. But oh, where's it? That's the microphone. Maybe I should be a bit more over here. Um, but then you get sort of rem reminded on the fact of the fact that you're on a boat when you sort of see your wet palette just constantly moving. Um, Greg says fixed point in time and space. So you're a, a time lord, probably. I mean, I need to, I need to figure out the sort of how the teleportation to the UK is going to work out. Um, it's not really like next door. I'm actually working on a a diorama um, at the moment that I'm supposed to be bringing to Salute. Um, and it's supposed to be pirate themed and hence i'm not sure if this is going to work does it work oh it works great and hence i'm uh i've started painting a goblin um as uh, you know they are the most piratey things um around i only just started this about five minutes ago yeah but this is probably the best goblin that you can buy at the moment from a Games Workshop, in my opinion, because it's got a squig on a stick. And um, it just completes everything. Um, so I'm building some kind of, kind of a diorama, which will feature this little fella and his friend on a stick. I kind of, in retrospect, just wish I would have, when I started getting back into painting and uh, the uh, glorious world of Warhammer, that I would have just started with goblins from the start as they are the most fun faction in Age of Sigma uh, when it comes to sort of looks and, uh, you know, there's still fun going on. Whereas the Stormcast that I'm painting, they're awfully serious, yeah, almost a bit too much so. Um, but this is a, a lovely, lovely miniature. <laughs> Alison says, bitey sticks. Uh, Alison is a big fan of goblins. Um... I think I've been focusing too much on a miniature. I need to put my glasses on to read the chat. Uh, Alpaku, happy Easter from Urebru. Nice. Uh, love your last video. Thank you, Alpaku. It's always nice to have a Swede in the chat. Um, I was actually visiting uh, my local friendly game store um, last week, maybe, quite recently. And uh, they have a new store manager is a lovely guy that I can't remember the name of because I'm terrible at names, yeah, unfortunately. One of my non-life hacks. And um, we sort of agreed upon the fact that I should bring in more of my stuff to, to Alpha Spill. So I hope that works out. So I can just sort of display all my dioramas and things like that over there, which would be... Uh, just fun because right now they're just sitting in a cupboard, but also sort of fun to people be able to see and get inspired by, I hope. So I'm looking forward to bringing all that over. Um, so in the future, I don't know when, maybe in the month or something like that, if you go to Alpha Spill, hopefully there'll be a bunch of my stuff there. Uh, 
Hello, Carbock from Australia. I hope you're doing well. It's a time in Australia right now. Is it, are you not in the middle of the night? Kind of, maybe late evening. Just um, dying to paint says something about painting green skin. Green skins is a hobby as it at its purest. Indeed. Um, I just get like to sort of get reminded of the fact that I'm painting fantasy stuff as well, because Stormcast are kind of like just big chunky knights, uh, also kind of like space marines. But goblins are just, you know, it's fantasy, right? Hello, Cyber Sloth. How are you doing? Happy Easter to you as well. And Mark from Montana. How are you, Mark? Hope you're doing well. Do you do you uh, uh, get to spend some Easter time with with your kids or something like that? Joe just woke up and uh, I'll return after a shower. Okay. Um, New York Primes has got a lot of uh, grots and Stormcast from the Stormbringer magazine. I mean, don't get me wrong. I I, I enjoy the Stormcast. I just occasionally think I'd have more fun uh, painting something more uh, blatantly fantasy and not as sort of seriously chunky. Kavak says it's midnight in Australia. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that you are spending your midnight over here at 52 miniatures. Um, by the way, everyone, please, if you haven't, just uh, press the thumbs up and like the video because then uh, more dear people will actually be able to see that we're live. Uh, YouTube's like that. So there's 46 of us in the chat right now and only 16 likes. So if you're enjoying yourself, uh, please press the thumbs up button. Max Power says, I got my seven-year-old to play a game of Rangers of Shadow Deep. How did you go? I've heard uh, nice things about Rangers of Shadow Deep. I've not played it myself. Numi, how are you doing? Hello, Alex and chat. Heading home right now to try and finish a Lord of the Print model as a birthday present for my dad. That's a nice present. Good job. Jason Ogg, how are you? First time catching it live. Well, I'm glad to see you, Jason. Um, good to have you here. Yeah, um, Cyborg Sloth says, I'm good but exhausted. Been social all week. That's, yeah, I can't recommend that. It's uh, um, overrated. Yeah, uh, so nice to just watch a stream and eat some chocolate. You should be painting, but it's okay. You can eat chocolate. I guess it's, uh, you're allowed because it's Easter. And look at that. Everyone liked the video or liked the live stream. Thank you very much. Um, I might as well show you some more of this because I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm kind of strapped for, for time. Um, kind of not realized that I uh, should be building that little diorama for salute and um, then some other work kind of showed up as well. And these miniatures really need to get, they should be done essentially, and they're not. And uh, so I kind of had hoped to be able to paint a little bit during this stream, but I know I'm terrible at trying to do several things at the same time. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but this little fellow, uh, I'm thinking uh, yellow is very goblinish. It's also sort of a nice contrast. Like the only sort of thing about this miniature that's a little bit of a shame is that it's not, um, it's a very armored little goblin. But there's not really all that much green skin showing. And so, I really need to make whatever little green there is 
to stand out. And so uh, yellow will be a theme. But uh, I don't know about the rest. I guess yellow and black is kind of uh, kind of goblinish. It's not, you know. I get. I'm not sure what would what would the piratey thing be. That'd be like uh, red and blue stripes or something. Um, but I'm thinking some kind of yellow, yellow armor and uh, black armor. Black cloth, green goblin, uh, bright orangey red squig should be a pretty good, pretty good plan. And I'm doing. See if I can show you my palette. Not really, sort of. It's um, for those of you that watched my last video. It's a bit uh, tight but I'm uh, mixing all my own paints again. I just added a few more goblin friendly paints. So there's a brighter yellow and a brighter blue. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't seen my last video, that will just be a bunch of humbug, but essentially I'm painted a miniature using just a few paints. You can actually sort of see them here. There's a, I've now added another blue and another yellow, uh, but there's two blues, two yellows, a red, a white and black and um, I'm just using those to mix my own paints for the entire two miniatures and uh, that's a diorama over here but I'm not going to show all of it because uh, that would be a bit of a uh, um, spoiler alert thing because uh, this thing should be a video as well. Um. <clears throat> Kalein says, Happy Easter, Alex. Currently finishing my kit bashed flayed men unit from A Song of Ice and Fire. Love your Stormcast gladiators. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Kalein. Um, I'm kind of terribly uninformed about A Song of Ice and Fire um, as a game. I've, of course, sort of read the, uh, the books and watched the TV series, so I'm trying to think what a flayed men unit. Oh, of course, that's the the uh, the North uh, flayed people, um, Northmen flayed. Yeah, right. Cyborg Sloth says, "I promise I'll paint." Uh, <laughs> you'll just eat chocolate. Um, Max Power says, I have to admit, I haven't bought any Games Workshop minis in years. I mean, I um, when I got back into fiddling around with little plastic toy soldiers, um, I bought a starter kit from, from Games Workshop for Age of Sigma because as a kid I played, I didn't really play much, a little bit, but collected, painted Warhammer Fantasy miniatures. So that was obviously sort of... Um, what I got straight back into. And then as a fellow on YouTube, uh, obviously using Games Workshop miniatures is attractive because people like to watch people paint Games Workshop stuff. Uh, but, you know, there's, as we all know, there's so much great stuff out there that does not come from Games Workshop, even though Games Workshop are very good at what they do when it comes to sculpting miniatures. Um, I think probably honestly if it wasn't for having a YouTube channel I'd probably paint less uh, Games Workshop if I'm going to be honest um, but this is one fine goblin so uh, I've also the, got this fella which uh, is a 3D printed miniature can't actually remember who I bought it from but I bought it from my mini factory uh, which will also feature in the diorama. So it's a scratch-built diorama. There's a Games Workshop mini and a 3D printed mini. So I'm sort of covering the entire spectrum of uh, dealing with this hobby, which I thought would be fun to incorporate that in in a um, 
in a diorama just to show off all the different sort of uh, pieces of, of the hobby. Hello, Halika. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you as well. Hope you're doing well. Um, New Doc Prime says, uh, could bite this. Wait, wait. Okay. I put the computer way too far off. Could bite the squig a bit bigger. Uh, so it matches the goblin in Labyrinth that tees Ludo with this bitey stick. It's a complicated sentence, uh, which was a bit of a riddle, but I think I understand you. Um, but yeah, the sort of... Uh, my intention is to get a very sort of uniform looking diorama by using sort of the similar kind of paints all over. Um, sort of like I did in the last video um, by limiting sort of my mixes and the paints I use. Uh, but, oh, I also kind of link like orange pink squigs, so squigs. There's also a squid in the diorama. There's a squid and a squig. Jan Andersson, how are you doing? Hello from Göteborg, yeah. which is Gothenburg to everyone non-Swedish. Got my fair amount of being social at GothCon the other day. I saw that. I just um, um, obviously would have gone if I was in Gothenburg, but I wasn't. Uh, too many people milling around for me. But how big is GothCon? Because uh, I saw like a picture that uh, Alpha Spill put up some kind of a reel or something like that on Instagram. And um, it looked like a pretty small room, but they probably just filmed where they were setting up. So I'd be interested to hear more, Jan, if you'd like to, to let me know. Kavak says, I've only heard about Salute, but mostly in passing. I know it's a um, comp, as do you mean as in a competition, but are you able to expand on what it is? So Salute is a um, convention thingy, I guess, uh, in London, and it's on the 13th of April, right? That's next month, uh, in a couple of weeks. January, February, March, April, yes. And they uh, they have uh, sort of, as you do at conventions, there's a, a big hall with uh, vendors and um, different companies that demo their games. I don't think there's much gaming. Like, I don't think there's tournaments. I can't swear by it, but I don't think there's much of that kind of stuff. Uh, they also have a painting competition. They have different panels. Um, so in the center of in the center of the arena where the gladiators meet, um, there's a stage where different sort of game creators and stuff like that can talk about their games, different panels. Um, so I'll be part of one panel. I'm sure there's things like rolling the entire day. And uh, it's just, for me, a chance to, like I was, Jan here in the chat was talking about GothCon, which is a convention in Yotabori, which, you know, if you compare the scale of things is rather tiny compared to something like uh, Salute. And I've just wanted to go to a convention, um, a larger convention than what is on offer in Sweden for quite some time. And London feels like pretty close you know, compared to going to the US. There's also uh, plenty of lovely uh, YouTube creators in the UK that hopefully will be showing up at Salute as well. And so then I get to meet them in person. It's sort of a bit of a weird thing, but when having a channel like this, it's sort of like you, you work on your own, but you talk a lot to people that do the same thing because it's like we're colleagues, but you only do it sort of online on Discord or through email or uh, sort of uh, maybe even talk over the phone sometimes, but it's never people you ever, ever meet. 
and just getting the opportunity to meet some of these people in real life uh, would be lovely as well as meeting up with patrons and uh, other people who enjoy the channel um, i've never really had a chance to do anything like that and so i thought salute seems like one of the nice ones and um, here we are well not really in a couple of weeks we'll be there uh, let's see where were we <laughs> you know prime says wow my taping typing went bad from there yeah it was a bit there was a bit of a sort of uh secret message kind of thing but i i, I got your uh point Pat says, well, you are in Stockholm, right? Can't blame you for uh, putting less time into hobby going into spring. It's, it's, it gets so nice. Yes, but we're still sort of give it a few weeks. It's uh, There's still a, a little while until spring, uh, sort of uh, until spring will be in full bloom. Galen says it's the Bolton's cavalry. Exactly. I, that's the, the North flayed people. Yes. Thank you, Galen, for explaining that. Carbock, okay. Are you interested in the old world coming back? If so, what factions are you going to collect? Um, I did a video recently painting uh, an old orc. I don't know if you saw that one. And so my enjoyment with the old world would be because it might be a chance for me to paint some older sculpts because i'm one of the people who think that the old silly sculpts with big hands um, and and sort of you know very old school style is a style that i enjoy and i have lots of miniatures from when i was younger that i thought well if people get interested in the old world then i can make videos of painting painting some of those old miniatures again um only that video didn't really turn out to be as much of a as a success that i would maybe have wanted and uh, unfortunately these things control me a little bit i tried to not make them control me but i sort of need to divide i have projects that i do that i do videos on that are entirely for me where I don't really care about the outcome, like building my big uh, terrain. Or recently, I've been doing a lot of videos on a uh, on a game called The War Transformed, which is, you know, um, doesn't really bring in the crowd as things from Games Workshop do. But to sort of balance that, I sometimes need to paint like uh, a Space Marine or. Uh, something from Age of Sigmar or whatever, just to sort of keep people interested, because it honestly, it makes a really big difference. And these things in the end sort of hopefully pays a few of my bills, at least. And um, I thought maybe painting that old orc would have brought in more people than it did. And so I would like to continue painting some more old world sculpts and miniatures, because I like the miniatures um but honestly we have to kind of see what happens um i'm not interested in playing the game right now uh, i'm sticking to age of sigmar and apart from age of sigmar i'm not really going to play anything from games workshop because i want there to be options for other games from other creators sort of like what transformed or whatever silver bayonet or frost grave or stuff like that um max power says yes it's the uk's biggest war games convention that it is salute um which is also one of the reasons why i want to go because it's big on and it's not essen spiel in germany which is huge and i'd probably die because i don't actually really enjoy conventions because there's too much people and things to look at my synapses get overloaded and I, yeah I'm trying to sort of 
walk a middle walk the middle road Carbox says, gosh, the UK, that's a long way away from me. Yeah. Um, but everything is a long way away from you, right? If you were in Australia. What kind of, do you have any large conventions in Australia? Uh, Anna Karin, how are you doing? I got distracted and I missed a lot. No, not that much. Just half an hour as usual. I'm here now. Well, welcome. Um, Jan Anderson says, Gothcon is held in a school, thus many rooms and corridors in several buildings. Okay. I was about to go to Gothcon last year, but I didn't. And uh, this year, I just realized too late that it was on. OC, I'm, I'm sorry, Oceaironic. OC, I have difficulty saying your nickname. Currently painting my Heresy Thousand Suns unit using a modification of your metallic red armor method. I'm really enjoying it. That's a really good um, yeah, sort of efficient tabletop thing. I painted a bunch of Terminators for my son, essentially using gold paint and then painting with a contrast paint, a red contrast paint, I think, over that gold. And you get this really nice, vibrant, sort of shiny, metallic-y kind of a red. And uh, I still kind of look at those miniatures every now and again when my son plays with them and think they really look nice and stand out. And um, I'm sure an army of that kind of stuff on the tabletop would look great. And it's not tons of work, especially not if you can be very efficient and just sort of rattle can everything gold and, um, you know, smear on some contrast paint. Yeah, but looks really, really nice. I believe I stole that idea from someone, but um, that's pretty much what we do our entire lives. So Sir Servo. Hello, Alex. Hello, chat. I had the pleasure of explaining to my wife last night why I was gluing sand to my skeleton dudes in the basement. Just had to spray paint over them and paint the sand. Um, I mean, sometimes when we explain what we're doing, it does sound a little bit funny when you're gluing sand to little plastic toy soldiers in the basement. Um, but in the end, it's... Um, it's a lot of fun. Hello, Victor Riviera. How are you doing? Hope you're well. I'm Bob Jacobs. Hello. Um, Kovac says the 1990s stuff was just pure silly, and I have a bunch of old chaos. I can't wait wait to get back on the tabletop. Um, I have I have a little bit of old chaos as well, but. Um, I was sort of, when I saw what they were releasing, sorry, I'm going to paint some more. Um, when I saw what they were releasing for the old world, <clears throat> I was a little bit uh, disappointed with the new sculpts. Oh, wait, you can't really see what I'm doing. There we are. That's better. Not really. Um because I thought that the new stuff looked a bit too new. And then the old stuff was just old stuff. I don't know. That was a bad explanation. But that sort of most of the old stuff was just the sort of rank and flank kind of miniatures. And then the new ones just sort of looked like Age of Sigma models. Um, I thought it would have been fun if they would have tried to sculpt the new stuff so that it looked like old stuff um, just to please all the nostalgics and um, I guess time will tell in a few years if the entire venture is something that will stick around or if oh 
darn, that arm should have been green. Yeah, okay. If the entire venture will will stick, or if they realize that no one buys the old world, I don't know. I mean, it's great for nostalgics and fun for people that want to play sort of rank and flank and still stick in the Games Workshop universe, I guess. Should there, okay, so that should also be green. There we are. I can't talk and paint at the same time, which is, uh, you know, makes maybe live streams a little bit pointless, but if I just get a little bit of paint on this miniature every now and again, um, I'm, I'm a lot closer to being done. Kavok also says, oh, a war transformed, loving that table. Yes, uh, I haven't done much on the table for a bit, but um, I've I've made plans. Um, so I'm currently working on, I had an idea originally to have a large sunken ship as a terrain feature. And I've been sort of trying to find what to build that out of and I've been looking in sort of uh, stores that sell old toys or whatever see if I can find some kind of a something to use as a hull um, because I'm not going to try and 3d print something that large it's also a bit boring and scratch building a ship doesn't really fit the aesthetic, I think, of the table because there are so much of it on the table is 3D printed, so the detail level is high. And so I've now changed the plan. So I'm going to build sort of like a hill with a little bit of a fortress on it and an old lighthouse. And so I've actually built the lighthouse, sort of started building it uh, from scratch. Uh, out of a very old bottle of window cleaner. And so uh, so that's a bit of a change in thematic. But I figured that would be a nice feature because the idea of the whole table, if you haven't seen any of these videos, they're pretty recent videos of me building a big uh, six by four foot wargaming table. And the idea is uh, inspired from a game called A War Transformed, which is a alternative First World War game, where uh, because of this sort of huge uh, incident of uh, an asteroid crashing into the moon, has not only sort of released magic uh, onto the world, it's also changed, uh, you know, the tides and how because the moon obviously affects tides and stuff like that. And so um, sort of a feature in this game is that uh, all the sea between the UK and mainland Europe has pretty much disappeared. And these battles, these weird sort of First World War battles with magic in them are taking place on something called the Doggerland, um, which uh, is the old sea floor between sort of uh, Denmark and the UK. And so I built sort of a coastline and then it's old sea floor with uh, trenches and bunkers and stuff like that. And so having a bit of a, a hill sticking out of the sea, which would have been uh, originally an island with a lighthouse on it sort of makes sense. And uh, I thought it'd be a, a fun terrain sort of feature. Now I'm just going to figure out if I can actually put a light into the lighthouse, some kind of a lead or something. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm working on that bit. Um, let's see what the chat is saying. Am I missing much? 
Oh, I'm not missing much. It's nice and uh, sort of uh, relaxed and quiet today. What, what's everyone working on, by the way? The people painting, or are you just eating Easter candy? Everyone, what are you? Uh, what are you all up to? Um, dying to paint says hand sculpts are the vinyl records of meaning painting. That was a that was a fun uh, uh, comparison, I guess. Uh, in my eye, pretty accurate. Mark from Montana says, my son and I, I have now bought 150 little soldiers from War Games Atlantic to play a War Transformed. Uh, we painted up 10 <laughs> and should be ready to start gaming Christmas. That would be Christmas 2025. Um, indeed, you, you get to, to practice your sort of uh, bulk painting, Mark. Uh, I haven't... I haven't really perfected that side of myself, realizing that having to paint 150 miniatures, one sort of needs to accept the shortcuts and things like that. Um, and um, yeah, I wish you luck, Mark. It's 150 minis are a lot. Have you uh, already made lists and stuff like that? Morgeist, how are you doing? Good afternoon. All Easter eggs have been found, so now I can uh, can be here a little late. Well, welcome. I'm I'm glad all the eggs were found. That's Easter is uh, an interesting holiday, isn't it? From um, dying prophets on a cross to a bunny that shits Easter eggs. It's weird. Um, Jez Hunt says, I found a cheap mammoth skeleton to use for a war transformed scatter. Nice. It's, um, that's the fun thing of this sort of old seabed is that uh, it used to be land mass uh, once upon a time. So um, back in the sort of uh, prehistoric ages, there was mammoths walking around and all of this kind of stuff, which... Um, has been known to happen that fishermen in in the dogland or on top of the dogland have sort of been getting weird things in their nets including sort of mammoth bones and stuff like that so all those things are obviously down there carbox says i can't wait for the next table video me neither it should be uh Definitely something up next month. Probably the build of of the uh, the lighthouse. Henrik Colin painting old hammer figures. Nice. What uh, what what uh, faction are you painting? Bob Jacobs is working on some tau before my crew reinforcements get here. Nice. Is that the new the new crew reinforcements? Jez is eating chili uh, and doing leather work. Might paint minis later. Nice. Henrik is preparing to run sword weirdos. My mind just read that sentence completely differently, and I saw you running around weirdly with swords. Um, yeah. Cyborg Sloth is as assembling some oh. homo gaunts. What's a homo gaunt? Because you're out of chocolate, of course. Anna Karin is adding mohair to seven uh, repainted horse models for a friend's fantasy diorama. Well, nice of you to help out. Zerobit Glod Posk, which is Happy Easter in Swedish. I'm kit bashing a Phobos apothecary for my dark angels. Yeah, so that's the way I'm terrible at 40k, but um, it's a sp space marine magician, right? More guys says my hobby desk is occupied since my son is building the model he got today. The last days I worked on my Stormcast Eternals uh, base building and stuff. Nice. 
Well, I've um, I've realized I have. Now that I've painted the the last model that I made a video on uh, in Drasta, I've uh, I've got three miniatures to finish painting, and then my army is done. Only I think I might make that into two. Um, because honestly, from what I understand, the new uh, there's a, there's a new version of Age of Sigmar that will be released this coming summer, with the uh, big changes announced. And so I'd be utterly surprised if any of my current sort of lists and miniatures will be sort of. Uh, I probably won't be able to use the same lists, and so I think I'll probably not completely finish my army because I still won't be able to play with that army. So I'll just finish off the two miniatures that are supposed to go in a squad that I've already completed and then wait and see what happens when the new Edge of Sigma gets released. Um, but by then, if that happens, I sh should have so many Stormcast miniatures that I can probably build any decent army because by then you know i'll have gone through two different armies yeah and hopefully they can make one at least i also kind of feel like maybe i'll be painting skaven uh, because apparently it looks like the next starter box will be half stormcast half skaven which is the uh, evil slash funny little rat people and um, I've always liked them just never started an army because there hasn't been many uh, models around uh, the, the most of the miniatures have been pretty old and if they're starting to re-release Skaven then maybe it's a good idea to start painting some Skaven Travis says, uh, done is better than perfect. <clears throat> I have a hard time coming to grips with this eternal truth. So much unpainted stuff. I'm on your side, Travis. Mark from Montana says, David is making the lists. We need some magical figures. And that's in, him, in his wheelhouse. I'm directing the humans. <laughs> Judging by what I saw that your son had in storage mark hopefully he can just find bits and pieces from what he's already got to use as as uh, the magical figures kleiner is painting warcry warband uh ooh. sandire's truth seekers i don't know what they look like what do they look like i need to check uh let's see Sandia's Truth Seekers. Oh, that's Stormcast. Yeah, yes, Games Workshop. I reject your cookies and I'm Swedish. Thank you. Uh, does this work? Can you see my screen now? I think so. Yes, you can. That's the Sandia's Truth Seekers. They look nice. Like that fella. And the lady with the lantern. Yeah, nice stuff. Hello, Sean. Star Striker, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. It's always good to see you. Jez Hunt says, I, Doggerland was drowned in the Mesolithic. Uh, it's a period in time, which is a um, long time ago. It's a pretty exciting idea for a setting, like your idea of a lighthouse. That's great. Yeah, I just figured a, a scratch building a lighthouse was simpler for me than, than an entire ship uh, and just placing sort of two hills will be easier than building an entire ship. Also, I just like the thematic of having a coastline with a with a lighthouse sticking out with maybe a light in it. Max Power, I'm finishing up my Cyberpunk Stargrave crew. Nice. 
Imperial Kriegsman says, do a Sebastian, please. Um, uh, please uh, explain. Any old death corpse of Krieg coming up? Question mark. Probably not. I, um, I'm not sure. We'll see when I start painting, whenever I get to m m assembling armies for a war transformed, then uh, some death corpse of Krieg could kind of fit into that. Uh, would be a nice excuse to paint some. I have in the past only painted one death corpse of Krieg, and it was a uh, uh, not quite death corpse of Krieg 3D print um, that I used for my um, how to wet blend video, which is an old video. But I totally enjoy the aesthetic. Um, I just kind of wish they had smaller guns, if that makes any sense. It's like these really small uh, soldiers that look very sort of World War One-ish, but their guns are like almost as big as they are, kind of. Um, Peter Ohl, currently working on Orc Commandos. Love your videos. Keep up the fire. Thank you, Pete. I appreciate that. Stretch, how are you doing? Hello, Alex. I'm mainly sat reading today. Uh, while trying to summon the courage to try non-metallic metal for the first time. I've, I'm no non-metallic metal expert, but the only, um, the only thing I've noticed is that when I did it for the 15th time, it sort of started to get passable. <laughs> so please don't be disencouraged. Uh, by just and just start because um, yeah it kind of after a while one starts to figure it out or at least figure out how to you know um, make it look sort of like non-metallic metal but it's really difficult to get there without starting so I'd say just start and maybe be prepared to to do it another 15 times until until you're pleased Unless you're some kind of painting guru and just nail it in, in, in sort of the first try, which these things happen. Um, a great idea is if you have a miniature that, you know, if it's a Games Workshop miniature or something that, like that, that maybe has been painted in non-metallic metal before and you can find someone else that's sort of done it, you can, can use that as a guide and you'll not be happy maybe with the result because maybe whoever else painted it is really good but then at least you can sort of see and get an idea of how to place highlights and things like that um, and it might be easier than just starting from from well, without a reference Mark from Montana says, Alex, do you remember if there are airplanes in a war transform? David has the book now and he's in Chicago. Yeah, if there's airplanes, I'm well stocked. I don't believe there are any airplanes, Mark. Uh, there's tanks, but no airplanes. But if you do have old airplanes, like if you have kits that you put together that you know you're not going to finish, that you're not happy with, or you just, you know, or if you have kits that you know you're not going to ever sort of build and finish properly you could assemble airplanes and sort of destroy them a little bit and use that as terrain because you might you could have crashed airplanes as terrain on the gaming table so uh, you know if you have any broken things around uh, or things you know you will never finish you can always sort of like convert them into a little trashy diorama and have that as uh, terrain on the on the gaming table Hello, ZomboDB. How are you? Good to see you as well. More guys says, I'd love to see your take on Skaven. Yes, that would be fun. I think if I would do that, then um, uh, it would have to be my first attempt at real sort of uh, 
army style painting because I'm not starting another army like the Stormcast that takes three years to finish because I can't stop being picky about the painting. Um, which is also kind of like uh, maybe why I'd want to do it because it'd be a bit of a, a challenge to paint rapidly. Anders Engström says, Glad Bosk, which is, again, Happy Easter in Swedish. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, I'm, tr I'm trying to finish. My plan was that these two miniatures were now supposed to have been finished, and uh, they're not. And I figured maybe I could paint a little bit while live streaming, and that's not really happening either because it's really difficult to talk and paint at the same time. But here goes um, this little goblin fella that I'm working on. And uh, now that I've been talking too much, my paints on the wet palette have watered down a bit too much. But we have uh, we have some kind of a goblin here with um, with a squig on a stick, and uh, he's supposed to have some kind of a yellow armor. So I'm just kind of blocking out some colors. Um, recently, I've very much been enjoying just getting one layer of paint going on everything sort of sketching things out like this um, before moving on to actually trying to paint any details uh, just gives me a, a better idea of if well partly if the scheme actually works or you know are things too bright are things too dark uh, things like that. So this in the end is supposed to be kind of yellow, more bright yellow. Um, so I guess this is like mainly getting some coverage for the yellow and painting in some shadows. And then I'll go over that on the highlights with a brighter yellow. Uh, and I don't know if that's supposed to be a a foot? I don't know. It's now yellow. And so I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I'm, uh, I get to paint. paint. Painting makes me happy. Uh, how are you doing? I'm trying to read the chat and paint at the same time, which is a really bad idea. So just let me get some some paint uh, on this foot, and then I can try and read the chat again. I'm going for a, a uh, sort of brown shade on this yellow. Um, I've been enjoying sort of doing more colored shadows on yellow, so sort of green shadows or purple shadows. But I think for this more sort of a just neutral brownish shadow will be nice. It's sort of a bit more piratey, maybe. Might sneak a little bit of blue into some of the shadows, but not, not really overdoing that this time. And then, I don't know, blackish kind of armor, blackish kind of a robe, I think. Thing is, I want to make that little, whatever green skin is there to really be what pops. And so the yellow will help with that. And the rest, I just probably will try and subdue. So that when you look at the miniature, mainly what you see is the green and the green skin and then the squig. 
Wookie says varnishing many old uh, uh, WEG stormtroopers and dark future cultists. It's a matte varnish, I hope. Uh, Sean says, uh, Sandai's Truth Seekers were my first Stormcast and are great models. Yeah, they look nice. Is that that must be a uh, Underworld's Warband thing, like this goblin. Anders Engström says, I recently pulled the trigger on getting Death Guard 30k army. Any ideas or thoughts on paints? I'm thinking streaking grime and so on. Um... I don't even know what they're supposed to look like. Death God 30k uh, images. Death God 30k. Okay, so here we are. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. Streaking grime. So they're not. There's not really a metallic thing going because otherwise that's always a nice shortcut. Um, because I mean, this kind of a tan look is difficult to do with a metallic. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely, um, um, wrestle can them. I mean, if you're doing an entire army and you want to do this kind of efficiently, I'd probably rattle can them with some kind of a brighter tan. Uh, and then I'd go in personally, I'd use an oil wash, but streaking grime is kind of the same thing, only it's an enamel and, uh, so like do them a, a bit more pale than you would think, almost white, but not quite, like a, a warm, warm, white, bright tan, and then let the streaking grime do the dirtying down. Um, so I rattle can them all in the one shade, pick out the me metallic bits. I thought this, this, uh, I mean, this fellow was really nice with the bronze, and then apparently green is a bit of a theme. How to paint a death card? Um, so rattle can the entire thing, almost white, bright tan, paint on the some copper and whatever green bits, and then yeah, streaking grime or um, an oil wash. would be what i did i would do that that would be my uh yeah i've never used streaking grime i sort of got stuck using oil washes um so something nice and warm would be what i would have picked for for an oil like a raw umber kind of a brown um Should be pretty pretty nice and swift uh, tftf how are you doing i built my black powder red earth miniatures today after finished cooking black powder that's uh, that's pirates as well isn't it Max Power says, that's why I switched to skirmish games. I'd never complete an army now. I can see that. Also, with skirmish games, you just get to paint. You can just pick another faction uh, and go from there. Bio. Greetings, Sir Alex. Wow. I just got knighted. How cool is that? And what did you think of the Golden Demon entries of this year at Adepticon? I must admit to not having paid attention. Like oh, I've I've seen the en uh, not the entries. I've seen the uh, 
the images of the miniatures that one and i think for me like i've never strived to become that good at painting miniatures um i still have a sort of um just more hobby approach i know i can uh, get into some weird details sometimes and use weird techniques and talk about sort of color theory and stuff like that but i've never wanted to become some i've, I've never wanted to become a painter that can win a golden demon um, i've never wanted to put 300 hours into a paint job um, I'm also not a competitive person. Uh, and so I can look at these miniatures that have won the Golden Demon and say, wow, how is that even possible? Um, but I get the same kind of enjoyment out of looking at, at a miniature that is just fun to watch for some reason if it's a fun sculpt or a fun paint job or a fun idea for a diorama but that hasn't got that 300 hours behind it you know um i don't know if it's how they photograph the miniatures but i also think they all kind this is i'm i'm not saying this is as you know i feel kind of a little bit not too well informed but to me, they all kind of look the same. Apart from a few examples, um, they look very, very, very similar in style, as if everyone painting knows what the Golden Demon style is, and that's what they're going for, which to me makes everything look very unoriginal. The ideas aren't unoriginal. unoriginal. Well, some are, like the dioramas. The, the one that got one uh the big sword thing was epic great idea for a diorama but a lot of the dioramas just looks like it's a way of displaying miniatures um and i think sort of dioramas are fun because they should have a story or you know stuff like that and for me it just looks more and more like how well can we display a games work miniature and how can we all paint it sort of in the same style because that is the style of golden demon i don't know if this is just because i watch the images that games workshop takes the pictures of and in real life they look a lot more different maybe um i've never had the opportunity to look at golden demon winning miniatures in real life um and so I don't really, I'm amazed at the quality of the paint jobs, but that's, I'm not, that's sort of where it ends a little bit. Uh, apart from the idea that uh, there was a, a mirror, a diorama that was sort of like a mirror that won the Select Slayer Sword, uh, which is just such a great idea. And, you know, it looked fun, you know. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of the other stuff that wins, it just, I yeah, I'm not because I'm not into that. You know, I'm not really interested in that side of things, and so I'm not well well educated enough to sort of see styles of painting and stuff like that. And so to me, it just looks like they're all kind of the same. Even though someone who paints for the Golden Demon would not agree with me at all, probably. Um, whereas. I know sort of Alison, who is a patron, she took pictures of the cabinets and stuff like that, of many other entries for Golden Demon that painting wise didn't reach up, obviously, to that excellence of the winners. But there were so many fun and quirky ideas and fun and quirky paint shops that I enjoy looking at so much more than just a lot of the stuff that won, which won just because it's so epically well painted and uh i also kind of get bored seeing so many games workshop miniatures and so looking at other competitions that are sort of uh, where you can enter anything uh, seems to be more creative and i can um i know uh, scott miniac did that a video where he went to san 
the Torino something competition in Italy. Um, and uh, that just looked so much more inspiring because there was tons of really sort of interesting and deep dioramas with great ideas and it was just such a lot more variation going on in what you get to see and not only sort of how to display games workshop in their best light um, but yeah i obviously think it's awesome to see miniatures painted to that quality it's just mind-blowing um but it also doesn't really interest me all that much is that a good answer uh, okay that was a long little ramble and so i missed a lot of things in the chat uh, Pashka says, salute happens to coincide with my trip to England from the US. So I'll be going. Nice. Please come up and say hello. Uh, that, that'd be awesome. Stretch says, says uh, regarding the non-metallic metal, thank you for the words of encouragement. I'll let you know if I'm a genius or not. Um, please do. Space Toy, how are you doing? I hope you're well. Hello, young Alex. I'm not, excuse me, I'm not really sure I uh, feel all that young anymore. Uh, goblins for the win. Sadly, I can't make it to salute. Well, I'm sorry to hear it. Uh, it'd been uh, great to, to meet you and say hi. Sean says, okay, I just pulled the trigger on a war transformed. Good excuse to finish some of my Krieg models too. Yeah, I think that, I mean, it'd, it'd be a great, a great fit for anyone with some uh, Death Corps of Krieg. Obviously, the weaponry looks futuristic, but it also it's just the miniatures, and so you can do exactly whatever you want. And uh, regardless, that book is a great book with some lovely art, so you can't really go wrong. Galen Board Gamer says, "Any advice for painting horses black?" No, Galen, <laughs> no advice. Um, I haven't painted many horses. Um, I think probably if I would paint a horse black, I would experiment with other colors than white to highlight it. Um, because you'd need some kind of highlights here and there to not just make it completely black. And I think if you try and use white, i.e. gray, it'll just look like a gray horse. Um, so maybe I, if it was me, I'd maybe try and mix in some blue into the black to get sort of a, a, a bluish black to use for the highlights, which might render it looking more black than gray. I think that would be my uh, advice. This advice is not based on me having painted many horses. Um, Max Power says, go gloss varnish for the real 90s vibe. Yes. Um, no, don't. <laughs> There's a bit of a thing there with varnish. I always matte varnish everything with ultra matte because I like the look of something matte. Um, but what one has to consider with varnishes is that like a matte varnish will make your miniatures look desaturated compared to a satin varnish, for example. Um, everything just looks more vibrant with something a bit more satin. Uh, I'd never go gloss because that just, it's glossy. Um, but as soon as you, like, if you have something that looks, that is sort of a bit satin looking and everything's looking really vibrant and then you matte varnish it, you'll just, uh, notice you lose sort of vibrancy but also contrast because the black becomes more of a gray when matte varnished with something ultra matte um, and so you also lose a sort of a bit of a sense of contrast um, uh, 
So Anna Karin says, look, look up references for black horses and you can easily see that they get brownish in sunlight, uh, sun faded black. So that's another way of, of, of thinking about it, going for maybe some brown in the highlights then. Uh, oh, and another reminder for anyone in the chat that hasn't uh, given this video a like, please do, because it uh, greatly helps the algorithm. Um, also, if you've been around for a long time watching my videos and you think, wow, that Alex guy, he really is awesome, but he must be broke, uh, which is indeed true. So uh, if you want to, do, want to do something about that, you can always check out my Patreon. Just, I just need to say that. Um, other you know, otherwise I'll I'll stay poor forever. Henrik Collins says the warband I'm painting are orcs and goblins, high year elves, sea inspired beastmen, chaos warriors, humans, a mixed bag really for skirmish games, and drakar and the role rollspiel, which is dungeons dungeons and dragons, pretty much. That is the fun of doing war bands instead of full armies. You can just mix mix what you're painting a lot more. Jamie Mayers, how are you doing? Hello and happy Easter to you too. It's good to to see you uh, or to see your typed words at least. Mark from Montana says, "Do I have airplane kits in my stash that will never be built?" Um, I suppose one or ten, um, and you, that, that you bought as well, going to need a bigger table. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking, kind of why I, why I said what I said, which is, you know, um, especially if you have projects that you've sort of semi-finished and definitely know you, so you have sort of half-assembled airplane kits that are just lying around and will never get completed, then, you know, you've already kind of built your little diorama or uh, terrain feature. Uh, Sim Bob Craft says, Happy Easter, and asks, do you ever get painter's block? Um, happy Easter to you too. I don't really get much painter's block. Um, and I think that's because of making videos for YouTube. So, um, I mean, essentially, I need to make one to two videos every month for, for, for YouTube. And that just means I need to paint something most of the time. So I don't really have much of an option. So I guess in a way, um, whenever Painter's Block kind of does arise, I need to force myself to paint stuff anyway. And so it doesn't really happen, you know, uh, seriously. Um, I can feel like sometimes, it was pretty recently, I think when I built my Wargaming table, started building my Wargaming table, it uh, there was several months of me not painting miniatures because I was just building terrain and, and stuff like that. And when I was supposed to paint a miniature, I sort of felt like I had no idea what I was doing. And it's I was a little bit scared of sort of starting to paint the miniature. Um, and it was a little bit difficult to start working on that video because I just didn't really feel like painting anything just because it felt like such a long time ago I had painted anything. But then, you know, I just have to, I just, I just need to do it. So I just do it. And I think probably if I didn't have the YouTube channel, I'd have sort of probably have longer periods than I do of not painting. I know a lot of people get painter's block and um, I don't know if you're asking because you need advice how to get out of it, but Honestly, I think that's probably one of the ways of getting out of it is just forcing your way back into it. Uh, but it doesn't have to be super serious. You can just sort of say that, okay, I'm just going to 
paint, you know, uh, a boot, There's a couple of boots on this miniature. I'll just paint those boots. Not sort of, I'm going to start a new army. I need to finish these 10 miniatures. I need to finish these 20 miniatures or 50 miniatures, or I need to, you know, build these seven tanks, or I need to paint this entire wargaming table. You know, no massive things because that's sort of what puts the pressure on, I think. Um, but if you just turn it into a really small thing and just, you know, I'm just going to try and paint this small thing, nothing complex, nothing advanced. It's just a bottle of brown paint. And uh, maybe that's all you do for a week. And then next week you paint another couple of boots. And then, you know, maybe you, two weeks later you realize that, well, you know, while I'm painting, the boots I can paint something else and then gradually maybe you get started again but you kind of just need to sit down and at least try painting some boots um, you know otherwise one just starts doing other things like oh yeah I need to fix the windscreen wipers on my car or whatever and you start doing other things instead but if you sort of just set 20 minutes aside and say you know time to paint some boots and then at least try and schedule that once or twice a week and maybe eventually you get out of the painter's block um pashka says uh the squigs in the flower fields and the squigs with the bubbles were my favorites is that from uh from a depth to con. Yeah, I can't remember all the, the images. Alison just put tons of them up there. I remember a, a big uh, uh, Warhammer 40k. They're not robots, but you know, they look like Transformers, uh, a knight or whatever. Uh, that looked like a Sunday, like an ice cream with cherries on it and stuff. That was fun. Uh, and Wet says, so do you have any favorite mini painters? Uh, I certainly do. I think probably Sam Lenz is uh, one of my favorite mini painters. Space Toy says Monte San Savino. That was the, uh, that was the painting competition I... Uh, mentioned previously just didn't actually mention because I got the name wrong uh, very cool competition but very high level indeed very high level uh, placebo Pete says uh, lurker reporting in well welcome um, uh, lurkers are allowed definitely uh, as long as you join the patron <laughs> just kidding Max Power says, I go ultra matte as well, but I do have a bunch of 90s dwarves, gloss varnished with goblin green bases. They're truly awful. I mean, that's a style in itself and uh, is totally, totally acceptable. Uh, Jamie Mayer says, regarding painting horses, uh, I've seen historical players use oils almost neat over an acrylic base and wiped off with a towel after half an hour or so. This looks exceedingly messy uh, as a method <laughs> i um painted some uh, they're not horses but the stormcast have some kind of griffins i think they're called griff riders so it's like a, a horse crossed with a bird crossed with a lion or something it's got a big bird's head and like a horse's i don't know or is it just a lion and a bird they, they a symbolic uh, mythological horse and when i painted them i pretty much uh, airbrushed because it's a lot of i guess you'd call it skin but i guess it's all supposed to be a bit hairy or whatever um kind of like a horse and i used an airbrush to paint most of that stuff and then I used oil paint on top of it and not sort of like an oil wash or anything like that actually sort of painting with oil paints because you can just smooth it out so much and create really nice and smooth highlights uh, 
with a little bit of texture in it that uh, rendered itself into a really great result. But none of them were black. Um, Mark from Montana says, oh, Mark from Montana is talking to Jamie. Jamie and Mark are having a conversation. I won't uh, eavesdrop. Um, Ghislaine says, you should try a Song of Ice and Fire tabletop game. It's a lot more friendly for new players. Rules are simple. There's one rule book without add-ons. The models are high quality. Yeah. I have a weird thing. Um, which uh, I don't know why, but for some reason I have difficulties with games that have references to things that have actors in them. I told you it was going to be weird, but it's like I really appreciate S Star Wars and the look and feel of Star Wars, the entire world. I grew up on Star Wars, but I'd love to play a Star Wars game without sort of hero models. So there's only rebels and stormtroopers. There's no Darth Vader. There's no Luke Skywalker. There's no Leia. There's, you know, because these to me are actors um, that crash airplanes in Hollywood. And it messes up my sort of fantasy. And for some reason, I get the same thing with. Uh, uh, a song of wind and ice and fire and that just because it's uh, I just think too much of the TV series when seeing um, the characters and stuff like that it's a weird thing but there we are Max Power says, having young kids, by the time my next opportunity to paint comes around, any painter's block is gone. There you go. That's another way of, of uh, getting rid of painter's block is just having kids. That's just uh, kind of uh, counterintuitive, I guess. Sean says, great point about the Krieg weapons. Sounds like a great excuse for some kid bashing. I mean, if possible, I've got a feeling that it might be difficult, but it, it might be as simple as just trying to shave off some of the sort of uh, plasma coil vibe from the, from the weapons. Uh, but even then, it doesn't, I mean, if you're happy with how they look, then you can just use them as are, as is, as will be. King of the Cheese says, hey, I just noticed you're clean shaven today. Is that how often I don't shave? I guess. Uh, looks as that cruise did you some good. I shaved on the boat. <laughs> uh, feeling less run down these days. I guess that depends on the day you ask me. Today I'm not feeling very run down. Maybe tomorrow. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm, I mainly I have a hard time with Swedish winter, and so just uh, living through Swedish winter makes me look uh, run down and makes my beard grow, not into a beard because that's not possible. Uh, so uh, in a couple of months you'll be like, "Wow, who's that fresh fella?" And it'll be all because of summer. Travis Denny says hippogriff, maybe hippogriff. They just call them griff riders, and if whatever the griff is mixed with, I, I'm not sure. I know it's got a bird's head, but whatever the rest is, if that's supposed to be lion or horse on steroids, I don't know. I guess they have claws, so it's probably mixed with some kind of lion, or tiger, or, you know, brow animal. Space Story says, uh, I now have an army of random busts. I read butts, but that would have made this sentence more weird. Uh, not sure they will fight together well. 
No, but you surely paint them well, uh, Mr. Space Toy. By the way, if, if is your nickname the same on Instagram? I guess it is. Uh, if one ever wants to see some uh, inspiring painting, uh, check out Space Toys Instagram. If it is Space Toys Instagram, please write in the chat. Uh, if it is, Wolvencraft, how are you doing? Good afternoon, sir. I hope you're well. I am well. Um, how are you? Did you go to Adepticon? Because you're over there, aren't you? Or am I mistaken? I often am mistaken. Space Toy says, but you've reminded me to paint more goblins. I'm sure there's goblin uh, busts around, isn't there? I know there's one that everyone paints with the round helmet thing. Um, but there must be more, right? Zombo D asks, do you ever paint anything that's outside of the Warhammer universe, like birds or dogs or cars or anything? Um, I remember painting some birds, but they were for Stormcast, so they were of the Warhammer universe. Um, I mean, I have painted some tanks and stuff like that, scale models. Um, but no, I, I can see where you're going, and not really, sort of more real things uh, not uh, from a fantasy or sci-fi universe and i don't really think i no i don't really um, i think maybe i would enjoy trying to build a, a real world based diorama maybe um, but i think a lot of a lot of the painting for me sort of the inspiration for painting is that through a sort of fantasy and sci-fi lens, nothing is wrong. Uh, and so I can paint more freely, whereas when you paint things that exist, there's a realism involved that um, probably would get at me a little bit. I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying I think that's how my mind works. Travis Denny says, front half eagle, back half horse. Yeah, I think it might more be some kind of lion, actually. Um, but it's difficult to know. Um, Oceoronic says, on Krieg weapons, uh, the blog between the bolt... Uh, Wait, and me has tutorials on. Wait, the blog between the Bolter and me has tutorials on kid bashing 40k weapons to make them smaller. Okay, so that's a good tip, uh, Sean. A blog called uh, Between the Bolter and Me. Uh, you might get some ideas on to how to make the, the weaponry look more discreet or realistic. It's kind of interesting. A lot of people that I hear about kind of don't like old sculpts because of the weird sort of hero, what we call sort of uh, hero scale thing, which was exaggerated then with hands being very, very large and heads being large and stuff like that. I don't really hear many people complaining about the fact that weapons are, as today, nowadays, are, I mean, the weapons were big then as well. But I kind of think of that sometimes that a lot of sort of modern sculpts um, are more delicate and more intricate and look more sort of realistic and it's which is something i kind of appreciate but then comes the weapon and it's always like a sword which is huge or a gun that's just you know um, impossibly large um yeah Wolvencraft says, uh, I'm well busy building a fortress monastery. Cool. Adept Adepticon is way out of my league, far too far away. I live in the middle of nowhere. You, should, you still haven't specified continent, though. Middle of nowhere in, in like, uh, Kazakhstan or uh, Zimbabwe or 
um, you know, uh, trying to see what I, my eyes are playing tricks on me today. Scotland says Wolvencraft. Of course, you are with a name like that. Um, so you come into salute then. It's only, it's only a what five six hours on a train. I haven't really talked much about salute, should I? I I uh, I named this video. I'm going to salute. Um, Maybe I should talk, talk more about Salute. I did a bit, bit previously. I'm looking forward to it anyway. Um, I'm a bit sort of uh, nervous of getting this diorama not sort of finished, but it also needs to get, you know, not broken on the way over there. Um, which hopefully will be all right if I can just have it with me on the plane. Um, but yeah, I hope it'll be nice. It'll probably be pretty, I think it's just the one, it's, it's a one day thing uh, on the 13th. And so it'll probably be pretty intense. I know uh, a lot of sort of other, especially in the US conventions, uh, I think what, what was Adepticon five days? Um, and this, I believe, is just the one day, so it probably will be pretty packed, but um, it's fun to have a reason as well, not just I'd love to go in any capacity, but it's fun to actually bring something for people to see and to be part of the panel. Um, I'm not quite sure who else is on that panel. I believe Build Making Stuff is on that channel panel. Um, as well so it'll be nice meeting bill um hopefully uh, still working on that but hopefully get to catch up a bit with guy as well from midwinter minis um which is going to be fun and um yeah if anyone's going if you're seeing this and you're going please uh and you want to say hi please do if you see me um Please remind me of who I am because I probably lost my mind by then because there's so many people about and there's a convention. And uh, if you really definitely want to come up and say hi and you can't find me, I will be on that panel for the big British make-off or whatever it's called at about midday, I think. Uh, there's an image that I use as a thumbnail for this video that says the time for that panel so you know then you know where you can find me and uh, you know you don't have to actually come up and say hi during the talk in the panel you can if you want to i'm sure it's fine it might be a bit weird but preferably maybe afterwards if you want to catch up and say hi and uh, yeah i'm really looking forward to it Jamie Mayers is packing up 1994 question mark vintage plastic high elves and forgot quite how massive their feet hands are. Uh, these are obviously rugby players in the army. I'm guessing it's just tricky to sculpt small hands. Um, <laughs> it's a style, obviously, but there must be something with, with just the practicality of sculpting. Um, and how you can sort of mold things back in the day with pewter molds and stuff like that. Yeah. More guys says, I wish I could go to that convention, but it's a bit far and, and a bit expensive. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm, I'm hopefully I get to go to, to more conventions. Um, I mean, there's, there's nice big ones in Germany as well. Um, so, uh, another day I'm, I'm starting to feel like I should be getting uh, more paint on my miniatures. 
and it's kind of a little bit tricky to do that while talking because I'm not the uh, pro sort of Twitch streamer. Every, if anyone has any sort of uh, questions or would like to know anything, please ask. Uh, but I think I'll start to sign off this stream in just a little bit um, so I can get back to finishing these lovely little I can maybe if I just is that is that enough of a sneak peek of my diorama maybe you can get the geist of what's going on uh, but there's still two miniatures to paint and there's still a few hours of daylight uh, in this bunker <laughs> so I should probably get into that um, unless anyone has anything urgent, I, um, uh, I will wish you a good day and, uh, just see that I haven't missed any scrolling in the chat. No, I haven't. Um, it's been great seeing you all. Um, please don't forget to say hi to your mum for me and, um, Hopefully I get to stream soon again. If you're going to salute, please uh, please come say hi. I'd love to get faces on all the weird nicknames. And um, there should be a video up by about then as well on, on the diorama that I bring for salute. If not, I'll see you soon again. It's been great uh, having a chat. Thank you for everyone that participates in these lovely events. It's just great to, to get to talk to you. Uh, Kim just made it uh, to see me signing off. <laughs> Hello, Kim. And uh, goodbye, Kim, unfortunately. Um, all right, everyone. It's been good to see you. Goodbye.